Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City. How's the squad looking ahead of the weekend? Um, I understand that Callum Cook's had a scan this week, so can you tell us any more about that, please? Yeah, we um, we had some disappointing news on on Callum this week. Um, after the scan, and you know he's 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 injured a, a hip muscle, and he's going to be out for around four to six weeks. So as you can imagine, um, Cook is a, a pivotal part of this of this team's um, form lately, but. Um, we have to perform and make sure that you know we've got a good squad that people can come in and, and make an impact as well. Who's your obvious go-to man to replace him then? Uh, we've got we've got a few options in there, and um, we've got variety and you know in different players can can suit that role in different ways. So uh, I think leading up to the game, we'll we'll sort of finalise that decision really. And um, very tough for you, tough for him as well. How's he reacted to that news? Yeah, he's he's disappointed. Um, no one likes to be injured and you know Cookie's found himself in good form so he wanted to continue that but again setbacks like this happen in football and he's a good character and I'm sure he'll react and come back um, come back positive. And how's the rest of the squad looking ahead of the weekend? Any other fresh injuries to update us or people coming back? Uh, no, no fresh ones, just, just Cookie who's obviously been missing for a couple of games now um, but again no one returning and, and it's looking like the same group of players. Um, in terms of the squad. How much of a benefit is it been then not to have a game midweek and, and just spend a bit more time on the training pitch? Yeah, massive. You know, the, the game schedule was Saturday, Tuesday for, for a lot of weeks and we spoke about it in, in previous um, times where, you know, about fatigue and mental fatigue and sometimes the travelling and things like that can can cause, you know, you know, players to be a little bit more tired than they would, would be usually. Uh, but again, it's been great to, to get on the pitch with the players and had a little bit of a rest. And then, you know, we've been working hard since then to uh, to bounce back in the next game, really. I know you both um, talked after the Carlisle result about being more clinical. How do you train players to be more clinical and take those opportunities when they come? Well, as a coach, you, you're putting in, in them people in those positions as much as possible and repeating that that action as much as possible um, and giving them game like scenarios where um, they're going to find themselves in that position again and, and they've got to um, find the right, right technique to, to deliver the goal. Just repeat, 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 repeat until it's ingrained in there. Yeah, and it's like say, it's, you get your eye in as a player and you start getting that repetition and that um, that consistency with, with your technique and you, you know things happen differently, things bob up, things get deflected. Um, as long as we're you know giving them, them uh, repetition to do it, then I guess uh, that's the way to improve it. Is set pieces something you've looked at this week as well? Or, or do you not really have to focus on that because the conditions played such a part in, in the goals conceded at Carlisle? Uh, if you look at Carlisle's record in the last 10 goals, I think around seven's been from set plays. So uh, we were well prepared uh, in terms of the organisation. Uh, things happen. Um, you probably couldn't see and I couldn't see from the footage looking the game back. Was the um, was the wind and, and you know aiming for the edge of the box and, and it'd end up near the keeper. So um, you know individuals have got to be accountable within that structure and within, within that organisation. But unfortunately, we've, we've got to put that put that right next game. Do you think maybe a bit of mental fatigue has been an issue over these last couple of games as well? Well, I, I think the the Carlisle game we we underperformed, but we felt as if in the Newport game we we played really well. It was just. Um, in the latter stages, we kind of, you know, had a couple of decisions against us, and and you know they end up winning the game two one. So I think parts of it are mental fatigue, and um, I think it's uh, subconscious that it, it's happening to the players, but they're, they're giving everything. That's for sure. And, and I suppose when you've suffered back to back defeats for the first time in a long time, that's when you really see what the character of your players is all about, don't you? Yeah, and, and listen, we're we're out of, all about character at this club, and. And having the right people here and people who are gonna, you know, work hard for the cause and they just wanna get back out there and perform and make sure the, the next game's a good one. What do you make of Oldham? New manager in charge there at Keith Curl coming in to replace Harry Kewell. So does that make them something of an unknown quantity? Um I guess so. He's had, he's had a few games in charge now. Um, you know, he's obviously a very experienced manager, um, we have a great career, um, you know, so we'll be preparing as well as we can to, to know what we're gonna come up against even though it's been sort of a, a quick transition in terms of their managers, but uh, we, we'll just try and prepare as normal for that and make sure we, we give 100%.
I mean, they've had eight managers now since 2018 when their club's new owner came in. Just how much does that highlight the impatience at some clubs and, and the pressure there is at all levels to deliver success quickly? It's uh, football in general. Uh, football's a, a results business and you'll be judged on your results um, and the way you're moving forward. Um, if that's your, your philosophy and things like that, it might be a longer term plan, but ultimately you're going to be judged by, by um, your record. So... You know, we're under no illusions that you know that's part of being a football manager. And Oldham away felt like quite a significant marker for Bradford City earlier in the season. Sadly, it might be the end of Stuart McCall's time as manager. It, it feels quite a whirlwind for everybody involved with the club since then. Have the last few months been for you what you expected? Again, I, I've been asked this question a, a few times now, and and it's more of the you know there weren't really an ex expectation um, for, for what we were going to do and and things like that. It was cracking on and, and taking one game at a time and um, continuing in you know working hard and and trying to win as many games as possible. Uh, we found found ourselves in this position now with with two losses on the bounce and you know we're just eager and the character within you know the staff and the players is, is just to to go out and make sure we uh, we get a good result and that's that's what we're working hard to do. With the exception of, of Forest Green, who were right up there, just looking at your run of fixtures that's coming up next couple of weeks, it seems to be a lot of teams who are either around you or below you in the league. So do you see these next couple of weeks, and particularly over Easter, being the, the defining period of the season now? Uh, you'd probably say so, because of um, the fixture list sort of coming, you know, getting less and less games. So, you know, these, these fixtures will have a massive effect on, on how we're going to end the season. Uh, but again, we've just got to uh, stay free of the relegation zone and, and, and keep pushing up the table if we can. You're not really looking down the way now, though, are you? You must be still looking up the way to see whether you can close the gap on those uh, playoff places. You know, we've, we, we're just taking one game at a time, you know, we're saying it all the time. And, and that's just the way it is. Uh, we've just got to get as many points as we can on the board, keep working hard, keep getting better as a team, keep building momentum and, and see where that takes us. In some ways then, although nobody wants to lose games, is it... <laughs> almost slightly helpful the last couple of results to manage expectations a little bit and stop everybody from getting too carried away with it all uh, I, I guess so um, you know two losses you know signifies that you maybe not playing as well as, as you were before again you know we you know we're, we're hurt by that we want to fix it um, and, and again we, we talk about the character and, and wanting to bounce back and um, that's the biggest thing um, maybe it has put a a dent in playoff hopes but again we, we weren't focused on that we were just you know wanting to win as many games as possible that's brilliant thanks Connor good luck this weekend thanks Catherine hi Connor hi there as we mentioned the, uh, the league result away at Oldham wasn't the best and neither was the uh, Papa John's or whatever it's called trophy game at uh, Valley Parade can you use those games in any way or is, have things changed so much that they're really irrelevant You've you've obviously got two, you know, two different sets of staff for one, and they've got obviously new signings and things like that, and players missing um, on both sides. So for us, where you know we're not concentrating on on you know the, the games that we played all of them last because it's a totally different formation, different managers, and our overall different um, you know expectations. So we'll just prepare as well as possible. Yeah. One thing you can say about Oldham is, despite their poor defensive record, they do tend to score in every game, which will give you something to think about at that end of the pitch as well. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're a good team. They, they've got players in there who can score goals and, and they're very creative and, you know, they'll try and, and they'll try and pick you off and, and attack the spaces. So um, it's, they're definitely going to be a, a big test, yeah. Obviously, when you and Mark first came in, the team were on a, a long losing run. Have you noticed the difference in the attitude of the players to how they were then and how they are now after two defeats in a row? Um, obviously, you know, straight away after the game, you see that disappointment from from Newport, obviously leading for for large parts of the game and controlling it, and and Carlisle, where we just didn't perform well enough um, to get anything. And um, so, I think that what what you can see from the players is is that disappointment, but that urgency. Uh, to, to turn it around and again they've, they've been first class on the training pitch um, this week and, and you know they'll be looking forward to, to Saturday and because of the results prior to those two defeats they must have a more belief in, them, in themselves now 
Yeah, it's you know, it's, you know, the the run, you know, the five straight in a row was was magnificent, and this is how quickly things change in football. You lose two in a row, and there's different questions asked. So, you know, we've just got to try and get back onto winning ways, and and like you say, um, let's see, let's see what happens. But it's I think it's exciting because the players just want to put it right, and what they've had at the minute is Saturday, Tuesday games, but. They've had maybe a week of rest to mentally to to relax and 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 train and and go home and relax a little bit more and not travel as much. So, um, you know, but we're certainly not looking for any excuses. Okay, thanks very much. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Cheers. Hi, Connor. Hi there. Well, you were saying obviously about you know Callum not being there. I mean, you know, he's been one of the mainstays of the team certainly. You know, since you two have come in and in that number ten role. I mean, he's been very consistent yes yeah everybody knows it you know Callum was um, a fantastic player for us in, in the in the games that he played um, you know and it's, it's unfortunate but a part of football and and I think it just shows the, the the tough schedule that we're all in at the minute where the games are just just you know so often Saturday Tuesday Saturday Tuesday and um, the problems that that can cause and the strain that that can cause on the body and um, you know unfortunately he's, he's felt something in his hip and, and now he's been ruled out and it's a, it's a bit of a conundrum for yourselves now, isn't it? Because obviously, as you say, as someone who's played that role regularly, and now you've got several contenders for that role, but presumably no one who's obviously, oh, he'll slot in full time. You know, it's it's very much up for grabs, isn't it? Yeah, I think, again, like I mentioned around, you know, playing that number 10, there's different types that can play in there. And um, obviously you've got Evo, you've got Clarky, you've got Chaz, you know, you've got Crankshaw can play in there. There's, there's lots of options for different reasons. Whether you're wanting to, you know, threaten the back line a little bit more, if you're wanting to press a little bit more, if you're wanting somebody to, to you know, overload the midfield and go a little bit deeper. There's, there's got to be different reasons for putting somebody in there. But again, if they perform and, and the team's doing well, then you know they could they could stay in that position uh, for longer periods. I was going to say, obviously, if he's out for you know worst case scenario, say six weeks, that's that's probably about eight games, isn't it? Yeah, with the with the current current schedule, yeah, it's about right. And um, obviously, look, looking at the league itself, you know, Oldham possibly sum up League Two as much as anyone because sometimes you don't really know what you're going to get. I mean, it's you know, you've seen again with the results this week. I mean, the Cheltenham result, for example, you know, it's a it's a division that's you know, it, the tables almost almost doesn't matter when you're playing, isn't it? Yeah, you do get a few surprises when you look you look at the the scores. Um, Saturday, Tuesday, there's a few in there where you know teams who are below the people end up winning and. You know, it is the same at all levels at times, and but you probably find at this level, yeah, there's there's a lot of teams beating other teams, and it's a little bit up in the air, and and that's why you can't ever go into a game thinking, you know, we're above them, so we're you know we're entitled to win the game. You've got to you've got to go out and earn it, and and that's you know what we always stress to the players, and that's their mindset that they have is is to go out there and you know feel that pressure to perform, feel that pressure to earn the right to to play and and to get the victory. And, and as you say, you know, I think they'll probably be busting a gut to get a response because, you know, it, as much as they needed, probably needed the break, it's also been a long time to sort of chew over a couple of defeats, hasn't it? Yeah, exactly. And um, I think the the guys have enjoyed actually getting back onto the onto the pitch um, to train, and and the intensity levels have gone up. And it's not, you know, match preparation match preparation sessions where it's a little bit slower and less intense. It's we can be really um, intense with what we do, so you know they they want to put it right. Yeah, that's for sure. And and you and Mark presumably have enjoyed this week to actually do a bit of coaching rather than just sort of recovery and and studying the next opponent sort of for the following day almost. Yeah, it's it's been it's been great, and you know the the social aspect that you get from training as well, uh, speaking to the players and having a little bit more time to. You know, to have those conversations whilst you're out there, than sort of informal ones where you're just checking in on people and things like that, and and working on maybe specific parts that they can maybe improve their game. You know, it's it's great being on the pitch, but we we find ourselves in a situation where um, it was more, you know, get ready for the next game, recover, get ready for the next game, recover, and and it was sort of in a automatic mode where people were just sort of doing it automatically and knew what was next. But it's been nice to kind of freshen it up and. And do something different, yeah. Right, stuff. Well, best of luck this weekend, anyway. Cheers, Sam. Hi, Connor. This this might be quite a long answer, and you've obviously talked about the attitude to Pete. But what would you say of the the, the main changes in this group of players from the one you inherited after that Oldham game? 
Um, I think the the options um, is one. The the signings that we brought in. Um, I think everybody knows we had a, a positive January where we felt that we got the players that we we felt could could um, help the team and improve the team and develop. Uh, the characters, you know, are, are crucial. We always speak about the characters and and who they are and people who are going to roll the sleeves up and organise and and be accountable and responsible and and we feel we've got that. You know, I can't really comment on before because I wasn't involved. It was just maybe just watching watching the first team from afar and it'd be, it'd be hard to say but I think from having the players that we've got we, we've sort of looked to, to inherit and, and take on people with, with good personalities who, who will work every single day to get better and how much are you able to sort of um, work on those personalities in, you know it probably feels like you've been in the job a long time but in reality you, you know not that long a time frame and how much of it is just about sort of the, the, the identifying the right personalities to bring in and, and impact the group yeah and I, I think your environment's in, you know so so important within that um, that you know we've got we've got a good environment here when people come into the into the environment from different clubs they have to fit in and you've got some really good leaders and characters who can who can sort of teach them and, and say this is how we do it here and things like that but and the, the players that have come in have been terrific and the, and the leaders uh, within the club who were, who were already here before uh, are setting the standards and you know we want we want everybody a leader out there um making sure that the standards are really high and the culture's as good as it can be and just uh, just on the injury front is there any any concerns it, it, it feels to us obviously we speak to you quite a lot nowadays that um reese and uh reese Dorton and Bryce bryce hazana's injuries are, are taking a while to heal is that is that the case is that sort of um just uh, just the impression from so many press conferences yeah, um, it, it's the truth. You know, we we've been sort of given given time scales, but you know they both keep having little setbacks, which keeps them out for another week or so because um, it's so important with the, the well those types of injuries that um, you prevent them happening again because um, you know they can be quite detrimental um, to their development as as young players. So I think their safety and their welfare is at is that the paramount of our, of our thoughts and you know um, we're just going to make sure that when they come back that they're fully fit and ready but you know I'm not going to lie there has been some little little setbacks along the way so you know we're hoping for a quicker return but we shall have to wait and see. Do you just have to tread a bit more carefully as well when they're, they're younger lads who maybe maybe still growing maybe don't understand their bodies as well as you know say a, uh, you know a, a Lee Novak for example? Yeah, as young players, they they're getting to understand their bodies and and when they feel stiff, but also when they've maybe picked up a picked up an injury. So as time moves on and and things like that, they'll develop that understanding. But also, as young players, you don't want to get them into a situation where they're getting a an injury that's reoccurred and, and maybe makes things worse over the long term. So you know we've we've got to to help support them as well. And and just on Bryce specifically. Um... How much of that is, is done by your medical team? How much is done by Leeds' medical team? Um, there's obviously a lot of communication between between both clubs, but Bryce primarily is, is with us getting his treatment. Um, but I think everything's uh, agreed in principle between the two clubs and um, in agreeance, and you know we're hoping that he's going to be back soon. And is, is that the same with Reese? Hopefully that he's back soon. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, it's yeah. You know, I'm not going to give you a time scale because it it'd be wrong. You know, with me and Mark have maybe said two weeks, three weeks, four weeks for for a while now, and um, we you know they're still they're still not you know weeks away at the minute. You know, as in two weeks, so and we we shall see. But there's no promises that they're going to be back any any time over the next few weeks. Yeah, of course. I wouldn't want to pin you down to a date after. I've no, just no. Said. no. <laughs> Um, and just, just finally for me, I mean, um, you're obviously still learning about these these players as you go along. Do you, do you think <coughs> you learn more in a period where they've they've suffered back to back defeats for the first time? Uh, you learn different things um, compared to when you're winning. Obviously, when you're winning, it's a different feeling, and, and spoke about before. Just maybe um, complacency can come in, but this group have not shown any complacency, and um, with the losses, you start to see who who maybe goes a little bit under, but 
listen, they've, they've been terrific and, and they just want to put things right, uh, which I keep saying, but um, bottom line, that's that's what it is. They, they've got desire to, to show everybody what they're about every single week. Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City.